20XX80, Kaido Sea, Japan. Storm rages Japan's capital. Havoc robot forces attack humans, causing fear in other places that the machine's rebellion could spread far across the entire world. In Kyoto, scientists and security forces work to prevent the danger without rest. Until one night, battle reaches the city like a tsunami. A horde of evil robots wage war and bring chaos. Unable to fight the enemy, security forces call for help. A group of scientists get together to create a defense system to protect the city. A young professor called Dr. Kanatos calls for the creation of a police force made of steel as the enemy. After a successful first creation called Betabot, Dr. Kanatos improves upon the initial project and creates a second robot, this time called Rockbot. Onwards, Rock and Beta! Greetings, everyone! My name is Zettervel, and I welcome you all to my blind, live let's play of Rockbot 1 The Machine Wars, a Mega Man Classic inspired freeware game developed and published by Upperland Studios. I've heard about this title for a few years, and I've finally gotten the time to play this title. It's also an open source SDL library based game engine, too, which I will get into if I have time during the later half of this live stream. And I've heard it's on the easier side, so I'll play the game on hard mode. So two choices of characters, Rockbot and Betabot. Rockbot has a shield, charge shot, and sliding. Betabot has sliding or dashing, dash jumping, and double shots. As most people play the game using Rockbot, I'll instead play the game using Betabot. So kind of like base, but without double jumping, and with double the firepower compared to Mega Man. Apparently we also collect armor upgrades in this game. On the top left is our health bar. I guess they work closer to how the hearts work in Zelda. Thanks for making the checkpoints obvious. That's not a fair criticism, that's a positive. I suppose these spikes don't exist on the easier difficulty modes. Easy extra life. So far the game seems easy enough, but of course it's the interest stage. As this is a blind let's play, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I make. Jeez, he jumps and falls pretty fast. Pretty easy boss patterns, all things considered. And we're taking immediately to the Roadmaster selection screen. Or rather, the bot selection screen. Starting from the bottom, Spike Bot, Dynamite Bot, Mummy Bot, Ape Bot, Daisy Bot, Seahorse Bot, Mage Bot, and Techno Bot. Who should I go after first? Techno Bot it is. And welcome to the stream, all the new viewers. I wonder if someone can translate the binary text over to English. I may have some easter eggs. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Darn, I can't reach that red gem chest. Because of the coloration, I suppose it's essentially this game's version of an energy tank, which restores my health back up to full. Here comes the introduction of disappearing and reappearing blocks. Thankfully I can dash. If I was playing as Rockbot though, I would have to use them to cross this section. can only have up to two volleys on screen at a time, but that's more than enough, especially at close range. Controls feel fine to me. I'm playing this game using a keyboard, by the way. I tried setting up a controller earlier, but it didn't work out for me. I couldn't dash or slide properly. Wait, is there a secret to the right? I know there are upgrades in this game, so I better take a look. Like there could be an invisible ladder or something. No, and I don't have a special weapon that can blow up the wall. Well, this was a rather straightforward stage. And now he's speaking in English. Come on, do you have any projectile attacks? Okay, that's different. Slow explosions. Bosses don't really deal that much damage to me, it seems. And by defeating him, I got the timed bomb. Let's go after Dynamite Bob next, as someone requested. Thanks for translation, Daibuman. Let's try out the timed bomb. I can remotely detonate it, by the way. Seems fairly powerful. And it appears to destroy enemy guards, too. 
It can blow up in the blocks. Those blocks probably collapse when I land on top of them. Two extra lives, what else? I still maintain my jump momentum for whatever reason. Red, green, and white. So E tank, W tank, and M tank. I lost my dash jump momentum. I keep losing my dash jump momentum once I jump off of the downwards facing, the downwards going platform. So I'll come back here once I get the Eagle Jet. You get a lot of ammo for the time bomb. Probably could do it about half the amount of ammo. I mean, it's kind of like the crash bomb, but with double the ammo capacity, and you can remotely detonate it. Sadly, you can't fire it forwards. It's always going to be placed in front of you. Ah, minor disadvantage. True. Otherwise, it'd just be straight up probably the best weapon in the game. Unless a few of the weapons are even more broken. Well, if I can't fit in here, I need to be able to slide. Dr. D. Dr. Discord? Dr. Doom? Wait, what? Do you have the ability to just freeze me in place with that flash? Your hitbox is a bit bigger than what it looks like. Megaman X3 boss syndrome. Specifically when you use their weaknesses. But here we're just using the twin arm cannon. Even after face tacking several blows, he didn't really do that much damage to me. And this is on hard mode, by the way. Dynamite Flash and Jet Eagle. So before I go on to the next stage, let me see what's down over there. Wow, this is fast. And as expected, here's the first armor upgrade. 
Wait, I fire semi-charged shots now? And I don't even need to charge them up. I guess Rock Blast equivalent would be a mega charge shot. And we're out. Off to Daisy Bot. And now we're in the Mushroom Kingdom. It looks like the Mushroom Kingdom to me. The outskirts of it. So the semi-charged shots. From what I gather, they deal at least 25 to 50% more damage. And this is only one of the three upgrades I can get. So the lightly colored rocks are fall true. Oh goody, atomic ostriches. I like the first half of the song, but the second half, not so much. Oh yeah, by the way, here's the flash weapon. Freezes enemies in place for a short while, and you can still use your twin cannons while doing so. Why put the harder way to get that extra life when you have this platform down over here? That seems backwards to me. And that's it. One of the easiest stages so far. There should be at least one or two more sections following it. In fact, I feel most of these stages they feel 33% shorter than what they actually should be. You know, the ground falling attack would be a lot more dangerous if she fired more than one at a time. Or if she ran faster. First perfect run of a boss. Petals Rainbow. Let's go after Spike Bot next. This may or may not be the hardest bot stage in the game, so I want to get it done as soon as possible. While I still have 7 lives remaining. I do like how each stage has its own variations on the Hatter enemies. I wish more of the Mega Classic games did something similar with the Metar enemies. Interesting, so we can destroy the spine analogs. Although that may be because I have the upgraded arms. Petals Rainbow. So the arcing weapon.
Kind of feels weak to be honest. Especially compared to how much ammo it uses. Absolutely nothing. Maybe if I was playing as a different character, there'd be something there. One of the issues I have with this game currently, the max resolution you can set it on windowed mode is 2x. I wish there was a 3x or 4x option. Oh well, someone could probably program it in. After all, this game and engine are open source. So if a weapon feels too weak or a stage feels too easy, I or someone else can always just edit it. In fact, this game comes with a game editor, which allows you to edit almost every aspect of the game. Oh, missed that. At least this stage fell longer than the previous one. They could have done with at least one or two more sections. So it's kind of more like a ninja. I suppose Betabot is better for going through stages, whereas Rockbot is better for defeating bosses. Ape bot it is. They are too slow snivy and they don't deal enough damage. It feels like I have 50% increased armor in this game. The only real dangers are falling to spikes or bombless pits. Let's try this. I still think the bomb weapon's better. I'll probably save it for weakness affiliations. Right now I feel my best weapons are my twin arm cannons and the timed bomb. Right now it feels I have one overpowered weapon, the time bomb, one okay weapon being the time stopper I guess. 
my twin cannons being on the more overpowered side right now, and my twitter weapons, those being the spike chain and petals rainbow, they feel underpowered. Mainly in terms of the max ammo count, ammo usage, and damage amount. Yes, Vincenzo, this game comes with a level editor, although in reality it's a game editor, because it allows you to edit and add in new enemies, bosses, mini bosses. If I have time left on the stream, I will showcase the editor. Whoa, that goes out pretty fast. I feel part of this game's easy difficulty issues could be fixed with more difficult level design and more enemies that actually fire back at you instead of trying to melee you. Body armor. I didn't expect there to be a fake wall here. I probably missed one or two of them in an earlier stage. Resist spikes? Well, there goes one major avenue of the game's difficulty. I thought it was just going to be the spike guard, which reduces the damage you take by spikes by 25 or 50%, but nope. Infinite Skull Barrier. Now my only worries are the weak enemies and bottomless pits. And lava. And there's still one more armor part to get, the boots. What will that give me? Double jumping? Air dashing? I wonder what upgrade Rockbot would get here. At last, the boss that is actually doing more. And a boss that dealt a notable amount of damage to me. Apequake and Coil Frog. 